system conversion methods, direct, parallel, phased, and pilot. Now, conversion methods are used to transition a new system into an enterprise, and this may include the methods such as direct, parallel, phased, and pilot. Once the system is converted, a project team then needs to train users in how to efficiently access the new system for it to be success and clients to be satisfied. And we need to factor that into our ideas when planning what conversion method to use. Because some system conversion methods pretty much give the system straight away and expect the actual users of the system to figure it out pretty quick. Whereas some implement a system over time and give users the actual time to learn the new system, but then They've also got to still be running the old system as well. So we've got to factor this in when we are doing our conversion. But as said with this video, we are looking at these four different methods. So we're going to start off with looking at the direct conversion method first, which is a conversion method where a new system is immediately implemented in full within an organization, replacing an old system completely. So pretty much it's out with the old, in with the new, let's go. This means that the old system is no longer operational and can be no longer accessed if there are any issues. Now, data will be backed up, so the data will probably be safe. But if there is an issue with the system, we can't then just hop back over to the old system and continue to get things done because we have directly converted this system. The new system is fully implemented. That's what we're using now. So if we represent this with a diagram, we've got the old system and pretty much we're going bang straight away, new system old system's gone. That is the logic of the direct conversion approach. As you can see, it is quick. We are doing it directly, new systems in and it's ready to go. And also means the workload of the users is entirely in relation to understanding using the new system. So it means They've got to adapt, they've got to figure it out, but their primary focus is just using the new system. And in certain scenarios, that is beneficial. It means a quick turnaround, the new system's in, the workers of the workplace have to figure it out if they do want to know how it works. And it makes sure that they learn the new system. But the downside is if there are any issues with the new system, we don't have the old system to go back to. Now, in contrast to this, the next type of conversion method is that of parallel. A parallel conversion involves both the old system and the new system running side by side. So I've got the old system and the new system is running next to it now. All right, and as you can see, the two rectangles there are not directly uh, finishing and starting at the same point. Obviously, the old system's already been in place, and the ultimate goal is that the new system will eventually take over and supersede it, and then the old system will eventually go away. So the parallel method of conversion has the advantage of the old system being readily available if there are any issues with the implementation of the new system. So it is a very safe and secure way of converting to a new system because the old system's still there. All right, so if there are any issues, we can jump back to that. But the downside here is we've got to maintain both the old and the new system. And that can lead to issues because we need to keep them both functional, both working, and see if that works within our workplace environment. Compatibility could also be an issue if we're jumping from one to the other uh, between the two different systems there. But it is the safest approach because we have both systems running in full. And as I said, the ultimate goal is for the new system to supersede. But there are scenarios such as at uh, the supermarkets where they brought in self-checkout terminals, but those self-checkout terminals still run alongside the old traditional employee-driven terminals who scan the products for you. And customers can pick what suits them best. So there are scenarios where the parallel conversion actually just stays parallel and we have two systems running side by side. And that is a possibility too, based on the feedback that an enterprise is receiving based on their systems. So those two, direct and parallel, are very contrasting approaches there. We're going to now take a look at uh, another two that have are a bit more dynamic in their approach. The first one is that of phased. In a phased conversion, it involves the gradual implementation of a new system in parts at specific designated intervals. So I have my old system and I'm going to gradually phase into the new system. All right. At specific periods, a part of the new system will be implemented, replacing a section of the old system. This gives the users of the system time to gain an understanding of the system in parts, have a full understanding of a part before the next part is implemented, and then they can learn about that part in a more focused way. 
All right, so it's a slower implementation method of the new system, but it is very focused on training the actual users and getting them to have a full understanding of the parts of the new system over a gradual period of time and essentially a deeper understanding of all the parts because they get to focus on them. So this will continue until ultimately the new system is eventually implemented in full. All right, so we get to a point, it might be that we do a phase conversion over a year long period. Okay, and then by the end of that year, the new system is fully implemented. But how it essentially looks is that we are gradually implementing the new system until ultimately the old system is completely gone. So there are many benefits, it just takes time. The final version of implementation, okay, for converting a new system is that of the pilot approach. A pilot conversion involves a new information system being trialed in full, but within one part of an organization. So whereas phase was implementing the system in parts into an enterprise, this is a similar logic, but the system is being implemented in full just into one part of an organization. Now this could be that there are multiple stores or it could be one store that is made up of multiple departments within it, but essentially one actual part of the organization, so it could be one Woolworth store, okay, trials the new system, whereas all the other Woolworth stores use old of the current traditional old version of the system. Based on the trial, okay, if it is a success, another part of the organization will pick up the new system. And if it is deemed that, yep, this is the way to go, they've figured out all the actual uh, fiddly bits with the new system, and they've this uh, part of the organization that has been trialing it have now optimized the system to work in their environment, well then eventually we can say, yep, it's ready to run in all our stores there. So that is the actual benefit of the actual pilot method one actual group within the organization get to fully use the system, trial it, experience it, and then optimize the system to work within their environment. And then it can be adapted and used in all other parts of the organization too. So that initial group that use it are known as the pilot group. They're the ones driving it, flying it. So think of it like that. They're trialing the system in full, and then it will be spread to the other groups within the organization there. So I hope this video has given you an understanding of these four different system development approaches and how they all have their own benefits and detriments that are relevant to them. But we have to figure out what context of the actual system development with each actual conversion method suits best. Direct conversion, when it's pretty much getting rid of the old system straight away and having the new system in straight away, which is great for getting rid of paper-based systems or systems that are near obsolete. That's where it probably is best benefit. Parallel conversion, where the old and new system will run for a period side by side, having both systems available for access and is a very safe approach, but we have to maintain both those systems. The phase conversion method, which is a very lengthy implementation process of converting a system, but the users of the system can learn about each part of the system in designated intervals as they are implemented gradually, giving them a great, greater, deeper understanding of how each part of the system works, giving them a good foundational knowledge of the system's functionality. And then finally, the pilot conversion, where one part of the organization trials the system in full gets a good understanding of it, and then it can be released to other parts of the organization once it is either deemed a success and knows how to be optimized by the actual organization. But the downfall here is one part of the organization is potentially using a, a different part of the system, and it's more beneficial in larger enterprises where there are multiple departments where this is feasible. So I hope you understand these four methods of conversion, direct, parallel, phased, and pilot.